and uh, he just got into his third shooting. And, uh, and just and, keep going easier yeah. and easier. Dude, and and uh, watch, <laughs> watching the body cam that, that was on him, uh, his and then uh, the partners near him, when uh, they responded to this dude, and he did a phenomenal job. Like, beautifully executed, problem solving, everything. ID'd the gun, gun came towards him. He had, he had his maul on, on the dude the entire time. Oh, you yeah. see the little green laser laying on him, and the dude shut the door as, as he was pointing the gun down on him. And he just smokes him through the door and everything. D- did a phenomenal job. And uh, he even moved, right? He, he moved and gave him a different angle to deal with, too, through the door. And I was like, dude, high five. Right? He did get shot in his his plate carrier. He took one, which actually the light that was on his plate carrier took one, which was a cloud light. <laughs> Stopped the bullet. Nice. It's sitting in it. It's actually cool. Oh, that's cool. Get that and, then, uh, and then the next time he got a wing, right? And, uh, and he, he had a little scratch on his arm. You know, but phenomenal job that he did and it's really cool to see but it's because of his first lucky lucky ass shooting that he took the time to go ahead and invest himself and it paid off because he could he could not be retiring in december you know yeah so you do see that quite a bit where someone will have a close call i've seen that dallas uh Weather well, looks good. Uh, <laughs> temperature on the ground is going to be 94.5. <laughs> and uh, everybody else uh, that has headphones on right now that doesn't give a fuck. I don't uh, like when the pilot talks to me. I'm like, just drive the plane. I don't need, I don't, I don't need to say I have weather on my phone. Yeah. Aaron's in the back. Do your fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Take off. Get us there on time, you fuck. This ain't turbulence, you pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's rough air. When's the last time somebody checked the door around here? They call yeah. it light chop. Light chop now. Chop. Is this an Airbus or a Boeing? Yeah. Do we have yeah. to worry about opening the doors? Should I have brought my own tools? Or will that be an emergency? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I flew down here United, and the only air, the only honestly, the only airplane I've been on in worse condition than the plane I was on coming down here was like Aeroflot when I was in Russia. So, it was <laughs> <laughs> and that plane had goats on it. We so fly you to the place. I'm like carefully. United. What's that like these days? Apparently, it's terrible. <laughs> We're not doing well. <laughs> no. Uh, I've been uh, doing Delta's the way to go. I, yeah, yeah, Delta. If I can everywhere. fly Delta, I will take that. The only, time. I think, the only class I teach somewhat regularly where I can't fly Delta is when I fly up to Andrews, because they're up there in the the oil panhandle. You, like American goes to goes to Midland, but Delta doesn't. So. Oh, you you were spoiled for a while living in Atlanta. Yeah, direct shots everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Nashville's like a mini hub. Ah. So even if I have a layover, it's Atlanta. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, I'm going to lose most of the day anyway. Yeah, so. I'm going to. And honestly, though, I don't so. mind a layover if it's a long flight. If it's a nice airport, too. Like, like when I go west, sometimes I'll go to Salt Lake and then go from Salt Lake to wherever I'm going. Mm. No, but Delta just has the best rewards program. They have the nicest planes. Everybody's nice. I, I flew on Spirit when I went to SHOT Show. <laughs> That's you, terrible. You poor it soul. fantastic. Yeah. You basically sat on a milk crate. Yeah, it was yeah. actually a, a very <laughs> interesting experience. Well, the milk crate was extra, huh? Uh, it, I was doing it was PSA like, market You paid for research. a flight. Yeah. You didn't pay to talk to anybody. It was pretty <laughs> much Walmart on yeah, that yeah, airplane. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been I awesome. think the only airline cheaper than... than uh, Spirit is Ryanair, but you don't really. I don't hear about them. They said you could no. even get cheaper if you go to the airport and buy directly from. Oh, so if you the don't use Spirit the website counter, yeah. you will get they a charge much you for better the website. Price. Well, so the, and I used the to websites, see all, all the airline websites. If you look at the the price once and you come back, yeah, it's going to go up. <laughs> Hell yeah, oh, brother! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is that Fisher? Yeah, it's like anytime I'd go to, He's go to shit <laughs> I'd, I'd get to the, when I lived in Atlanta. I'd get to the airport, and Delta is like so big that all of Delta check in is one terminal. Yeah, but like sometimes I'd walk over to the other terminal, do something, to see the Spirit counter, and like it was just fucking chaos. Yeah. Whereas Delta, they're like, "How can we help you?" And like Spirit's like, "Who the fuck's next?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Walmart, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's Walmart. Uh, it's like Walmart in Mexico. Mm. Actually, Walmarts everywhere are all the same. Mm. I've been to a Walmart in almost every state that I fly to, and every single time I'm like, "Yeah, they're pretty much the same." That guy's in the other Walmart I was just at. <laughs> yeah, they have the, they have the same characters. Yeah, they're all the yeah, same yeah. characters. They just got different names, you know. Fantastic. All right, so what, what, what did we want to talk about? Podcast. So today we're talking about rewards uh, points and airlines and miles and yeah. traveling. <laughs> traveling as People retards that travel. People will just be like, nah. <laughs> that doesn't relate to me. 
So today we have Duffy and Cowan on the podcast. Yeah. So We're here at Shooter Symposium 2024, hanging out here in the corner of the lounge. Just uh, vendor day, day one. So we're out here just chilling, chilling like a villain. We well, have better uh, lighting this time. Yeah, we, we do have to the camera guy who shall remain. Do nameless. we not get to look in this camera? You we have to look one. in that one. We you can't can, all share. You can turn around if you would. Like we should all just like awkwardly <laughs> stare at the viewers. It's just going to autofocus <laughs> weirdly. Just every time camera. Make weird e- editing <laughs> this is going to be real pain yeah. <laughs> for the video guy. Camera angles, AI are man. They just do AI for <laughs> camera editing. Really, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Like, well, I, you know more about it than I do. Yeah, uh, I just tell it what track whose face is, and what track the audio is, and then it goes, no cuts it up, switches way. camera angles yeah, back and forth. Yeah. What? Yeah. A, it, it took an eight-hour process for me. When it wasn't really good because I'd stay on you for two minutes and I'd go for you to two minutes and everything. But now it'll go for me. Then Ike will say something. It'll go to him at two, three hours most now. Like in this, in this 30 seconds, it's already changed camera angles five times. Yeah. Oh, crap. And is this in the editing software? Yeah. It's a plug into Premiere Pro. That's oh, yeah, so easy. Cool. See, I use like uh, I use Filmora. I ain't trying to step it up to that stuff I don't know how to use. Hmm. <laughs> AI, dang, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be it's doing it over, man. Yeah. yeah. Literally, eventually. Possibly. <laughs> Skynet. So if you're watching this in three years and the the robots now control the world. Um, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we told you so. <laughs> Everywhere is AI, except for on the range. Mm-hmm. So what y'all so speaking of that, what are, yeah. y'all, what are y'all teaching this weekend? So tomorrow night, Aaron and I are both teaching uh, a low light pistol class. Um, Teaming up. Yeah. Doing the doing the bringing the band back together, trying to do the two panda thing, and turn into one yeah. panda, yeah. So uh, <laughs> do that, um, and then uh, what is it? Saturday night I have a low light class again, and then Sunday morning I have a handgun class. So just my mechanics courses. Yeah, I'm doing uh, the low light with John, and then I have rifle, and then Sunday I'm doing uh, intermediate handgun, but only eight hours of it. So we'll see how that goes. So condensed courses. It'll be a good time. And is this year all double instructor classes? Or? There's quite a few of them going on, but mm-hmm. not everybody's. Not everybody. Not like every class one, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, I looked at the schedule. I saw a lot of doubles. I think um, I think the students get a lot out of that because yeah. they get two different perspectives. Me and John, we, we have a, like, if you were to put us on a Venn diagram, the crossover is pretty reasonable, but yeah. it's not everything. Yeah. And, you know, I tell students all the time, like, you should always seek out an alternate opinion on whatever you're interested mm-hmm. in, at least one. Because we all teach about 80, 90% of the same stuff. But sometimes that 10% really matters. And for me, it's like uh, me and John may teach something the same way, but we may teach it differently in how we deliver it. And mm-hmm. it may click better for somebody else, for yeah. John, than they did with me. So yeah. there may be the exact same block of instruction, mm-hmm. but the way he delivers it appeals to them more and maybe one of his students it would appeal to them more the way i did it so yeah. it depends on their level of autism <laughs> right if, <laughs> if their scale is this way they'll understand us one more how autistic <laughs> are you where are you on the tistic how's, scale? how's your tism yeah how's the tism yeah uh, uh, what scale what who's using big words today yeah. aaron usually uses the biggest words yeah he does he, he does the more take about stuff yeah he likes uh, you know he's i try not to be <laughs> i try not to be but it's okay. There's a it's lot okay. of words. Uh, and the thing is, it could be a vocabulary class too. Yeah. And I, I think people you can learn. You never know where, the, where it's going to come at you, what you're going <laughs> to learn, where it's going to come from. He, he just said what? What does that fucking um, mean? Try to, keep <laughs> things as, try to keep things as – I try to be as laconic as possible, but it's not always <laughs> – uh, sometimes it, it, it airs into pedantism, and, and that appeals to some people. Um, yeah. They like the specificity of it. <laughs> The, keeps the, them grounded. The, the nitty gritty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the specificity of this particular thing? Oh, uh, that's what you should do on every class listing. Have a specificity level. Yeah. Like this is a level ten. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is how I teach this one. And then just write out the scale, almost like a pain scale. Like do little faces, of, like, how, <laughs> how checked in someone is, or how che- like look. This is like a, this like is this like a this is like a two on the specificity scale. So you don't even really have to leave the parking lot. Yeah. You yeah. can just be you, out there. You could just hear it, and you'll yeah, be all right. Yeah. <laughs> me, and, me and Ian have joked about. Getting Getting Ike like a chart to where he can walk in and be like, "This is this is how I feel today." Because oh, like a little like, like a little Velcro thing he can move. Because <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, in and he'll he, he'll be on a call and be super busy and going at it. You're like, "Hey, is, is he is he is he upset?" I'm like I don't I don't I don't they know. And then he swag. walks in and just 
cracks the joke. You're like, well, he's. What's uh, really great is I'll wear AirPods happy. too sometimes. So like I'll be out back, like in the back doing something with AirPods in on a call. <laughs> And you, I usually only wear one, so like they'll see me from this side. They'll walk up and start talking. I'm like I'm on a call. Like they have no idea though. Yeah. Like so it's. Yeah, you'll be in in your audio book, chilling yeah. out. Or I'll have both in. I'm just over there, like just like doing my thing, and then they're like talking to me for five minutes, and I'm just over there. I'm like that without anything in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> just, just constantly moving his head. My wife can be in the other room, and she'll say something. And I just hear vowels. I don't. I can't make out what she's saying. Uh, wah, 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 yeah. wah. Oh. They, they should know this by now. I had to get I had to move an Alexa into our bathroom so I wouldn't get yelled at. Mm-hmm. So they could just be like, "Hey, make an announcement," because I'd be in my office and you Whoa, can't you hear can from that. the you can't hear from the bathroom hmm. to the office. All you hear is rah, 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 and like, "Who the fuck's yelling at me?" So you use Alexa like this a PA is, system yeah, in the house. This is yeah. a really first world conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we use it as an yeah. announcement. So we got a lot of white people problems here. <laughs> <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Man, my technology <laughs> that I bought for myself I need really is hurting. I need another talking me. box that's a little closer than this other talking box <laughs> that I already have. <laughs> it works. That's, no, that's great. It works. That's absolutely good. You know, and my my nine year old the other day, she's doing her homework in her in her in her room, sitting there, and I hear her go, Alexa, how do you spell whatever word it was? And I was like. I think that's cheating, but I like it. <laughs> that's that's using your resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's exactly. using your resources. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I mean, there's I a downside it. to it now because now you just you just know something. Like before, it's like I have to I, a comedian it. did a bit on this where he's like, "Where's Tom Petty from?" And it took him like ten years to figure out where Tom Petty was from. But now you can just be like, "Tom Haley's uh, Tom Petty is from blah, and he's also apparently an alien." <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is true. It kind of breaks the that ice. That instant fast, gratification. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, There's no mystery on that topic, mm. which we'll we'll turn this into a technology podcast. What are y'all seeing right now? Any like techno technologically advanced tools y'all are using to teach? Uh, recently, I think we both got the uh, the Ace Virtual Trainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, we got them at Shot Show. Uh, they gave them to us, and they were like, "Play with them." And at Shot Show alone, it was kind of fun to play with. Um, once you tweak it a little bit, cause you had to tweak the settings to make sure that it's kind of tracking the same way you're seeing, cause sometimes it like moves too slow. Uh, once I tweak the settings, I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, what I did notice though, is I'm not holding the little controller like I hold a regular gun. Mm. So like in the sense of like grip wise. Yeah. Cause there's no recoil. Yeah. So there's no recoil. It's, it's like holding like, an Xbox controller, like a gun. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and what I realized is like, that's not helping me. So I had to be very specific about how I was holding it so that it transferred that same like ability, if you want to yeah. call it that or, or practice. Um, but I don't use it only. I, I think it's, it's nice to have. It's not a have to have, but it's a cool piece of technology that you can use to it's like. It's definitely useful for the visual process. If definitely. Nothing else. Definitely. And then you could do this pass through thing where you can see like the room that you're in and put targets all over the place. And all you need is a yeah. Oculus 2. Oculus 3 is better yeah. uh, for more features, better clarity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then th- they make the gun, and then you basically... Put the, the little controller in it. Put the controller in it, and then, you know, obviously calibrate it. Mm-hmm. And then you can run stages. You can do the pass-through where you can set up your own stages. Uh, it's useful. But, of course, it's a, it's a, just another one of those issues where... And then the Cool Fire Trainer is out here, too, and that's another, that's another facet or, or another option that people have. A lot of these products, they don't replicate recoil so if you think about just great up just general old dry fire you're doing a trigger press but what happens when you press that trigger press trigger never happens so you're never experiencing recoil so Mm -hmm. some people will develop really good physical technique for for dry fire but then when they go shoot they get frustrated and i was like well you probably weren't gripping the gun like you would have been gripping it Uh, in anticipation of that energy gripping it two different ways so i've always found dry fire to be very useful for everything up until i fire that first round and then after that, I got to find a different avenue or a different way to approach it. Like Mantis is good, the Mantis X. Um, I'll do dry fire sometimes where I'll do a very specific string of what I'm doing, like, you know, 10 different exercises. And then I'll take the Mantis X to the range and then shoot those same exercises because you can run it on the gun and see what the differences are. And see, because I think humans just by, by design, we will take shortcuts if we can. And we don't always consciously realize it. So I might be not gripping the gun or pulling the trigger the same way, but then when I know that it's going to recoil, 
my behavior changes. Yeah. And I want to see what the difference is going to be between the two performances. Yeah, like the whole, I know I'm going to pull out and it's just, it's just one shot, and so mm -hmm. I'm not really... Or when you know a reload's yeah. coming. Yeah. You know, I yeah. see students do this in class a lot, because like, I'll set my reload stages up where it happens, you start from a sight pitcher, because that's where reloads happen. Almost every reload is going to happen from a sight pitcher. So you're shooting, 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 slide lock, right? But I'll be like, all right, chamber around, take that mag out, put an empty mag in, and then we're going to start from right here. They know... That yeah. gun's about to go to slide lock, and they're like, I got to be fast. So they'll be like, bang. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, like why did you hit his target? I don't know. <laughs> Where'd that one go? Yeah, uh, they'll start the reload. I'm like, dude, you got to go bang, barrel, then reload. Yeah, yeah, but they'll start the rotation. And sometimes it's just like two, three inches. <laughs> but you can, definitely, you can definitely tell they're doing it. Yeah. Um, I had one guy. He, uh, and he's like, I've never done this before. I don't understand why I keep doing this. But he kept doing it. Right before he pulled the trigger, he'd hit the mag release. And then he'd fire. <laughs> and then he'd put the mag in. And he'd go back and he'd click. That's his Oh, tism. yeah, because the slide went log back. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And, and I'm like, that's smart, if you, but you're cheating. You got to knock your it game off. In it at that yeah, you're. Yeah. Yeah, well, so I have. I actually have a different philosophy on dry fire. Like, I don't like using any technology. Like the majority of the time, I don't use anything but my gun, and uh, and I pay attention to what the sighting system's doing, and I use that to evaluate my shooting, and I find that <clears throat> to give me the best results uh, over using like a Mantis or using the VR stuff or any of those kind of cold fire thing in my bobs. Um, the only thing, once again, that we're not getting just like any dry practice is recoil. So if uh, what what you do get out about not using any of that other stuff is you pay attention more to mm -hmm. what you're actually supposed to be paying attention to, which is what your sighting system is doing to an extent. So I could see if I make minor errors and see that thing wiggle funny or do some kind of little slashy movement. And I'm like, ooh, I messed up. Right. And I, I could identify those things a little easier when I don't have some funky recoil from like CO2 coming out of me yeah. or uh, I'm not paying attention to what the, the readout is telling me on the accelerometer that I just attached to my gun, you know? So little things like that, like I get out of, out of just using good old, like <laughs> just the gun and that's it. And, uh, and you'd be surprised how much you can acquire from that if you pay attention enough. Yeah. And, uh, and I think people are always trying to find the, like the quick fix, like Aaron said, and there is none. There's never going to be. It's I, you either get it or we can one day upload you with skill. But like we yeah. haven't gotten there. Like Elon Musk hasn't figured that out yet. Yeah. So until we get there, like there's no easy button. You just have to do the reps, right? And that's the hard part there. Is yeah, getting people to do the reps. Well, what's funny is like I, I was just talking about it with somebody else. Um, it's like uh, I, I was talking to him because I, I had a private with him when I came out for my night vision class here, and he was like, "Oh yeah, man, I, I actually uh, hate to say it, but I haven't been practicing." I'm like, "Well." Like that sucks, right? Like he's like he's like yeah. Like every time I pick up my gun, I still feel cold. Like I feel like I, I need to warm up before I'm able to shoot well, and that's that's a great indicator that you haven't been practicing enough or or just handling your firearm, right? Like the more you do something, right? Like like comfortability best, is yeah, huge. Like comfort with it, right? But if you think about it, like like uh, driving your own car. Right? If you've had your car for a while, you drive it and you're comfy in that thing. You sit in it, you're good, as long as your wife hasn't messed up your seat. Um, <laughs> and then and then from there, like if you ever get in a rental car, which all of us probably do at some point, you get into a rental car, you're like super uncomfortable. You're like, fuck, this is so messed up. I got to mess with this. And you have to constantly shift the seat throughout your drive to figure out where it needs to be. And it's still like a learning process as you do it. But if you had that car for a week, man, it's like you get to your car and you're like, wait, the shifter's not even there anymore. Yeah. Like, like it's a different car. You know, you've gotten used to it. Because we, as humans, can adapt to things really quick. But you have to give yourself the time to do it. And that's that's where people fail is, like, they are they don't they don't spend enough time with it. Just like a cell phone, man. You get a new cell phone. If you switch from, like, Android to iPhone or iPhone to Android, like, it's a huge learning process, like, to, like, learn the new, uh, like, OS that you're using. But from there... Once you get it a week later, you're like, all right, cool, dig, 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 and you just do your thing. So it's kind of cool, but you have to put the time into it, and that's that I think is uh, invaluable. And if you did that with your gun every day and just touched it for five minutes instead of scrolling through Instagram looking at titties and asses, like you'd probably get a lot out of it compared. So five minutes like of just literally handling it, not even having to pull the trigger, not even having to do anything fancy, you'd get better than you thought you were, you know, or you more comfortable than you thought you could be. And now you've convinced me to buy a Walther steel frame PDP. Go for it. Go for it. Because I've been like, man, I don't want to 
Do learn I a want, new gun. I don't want to learn a new ma- new new gun. Oh, I, different I, mechanics. I deal with that all the time. Don't don't fear the well, you get Yeah, well, you. <laughs> how many well, now what I'm saying. Going through it. In a, in well, here's a year. the thing. I, it's like I'm super boring when it comes to taking a class <laughs> for me. Like if you come to a red dot instructor class, especially like a like a one that's going to have law enforcement there, I'm running a stock gun. I'm yeah. going to run a stock AXG or a stock G17 or. Um, if the class is 2011 heavy because all these uh, LA agencies are going to Scottos for some reason, mm-hmm. uh, don't get me wrong, Scottos is a great gun. I don't understand why it's seeing a resurgence in law enforcement. I've actually seen it starting to cause problems, but that's a separate conversation. But I'll bring a 2011 style gun just in case because I want the students to, to when I do demo, I don't demo everything, but some things have to be demoed. I want them to see me doing it on their gun mm-hmm. without being like, give me your gun. But because I'm a left handed shooter, I have to constantly, I literally, in my mind, I pull, I open a drawer and say, this is the AXG drawer. These are the AXG controls. Mm -hmm. On my AXG, my magazine release is set up for a right-handed shooter. On my Glock 17, my magazine release is set up for a left-handed shooter. On my 2011s, they're all set up for right-handed shooters. So anytime I change guns, I got to open that drawer and take out that mental process and like put it into the 8-track and knock it in there. Plug in that program. Crank it up a little bit and get it to work. Because I have to remind myself, hey, when when you do this demo and you go to hit that magazine release, it's not where you think it is, <laughs> coming from the gun you just used. And I've had good success with that, but I had to break that process down in dry fire. And for me, I'll do I do more dry fire in hotels than I do at home, mm-hmm. but I still do dry fire at home. But I've got myself set up to basically a disciplined standard of a minimum of five minutes. I'll just set the alarm on my phone and I'll do five minutes of dry fire. And if I have something I need to do, as soon as that timer goes off, I'm done. But if I'm in the hotel room and I'm watching Cartoon Network, I'm like, well, I ain't got nothing else to do anyway. <laughs> yeah. Let me go ahead and pop another five minutes on the timer. And that way I'm not I'm not trying to take a huge bite out of my day. And I'm still getting the reps in that I want to get in. And sometimes, I, like, I do use the Mantis, but I don't use it all the time. Um, and then with the Ace, I'm pretty much just using that. I, my plan for that thing was to have it in the luggage and take it. And I don't feel like dealing with all that. It's, it's like playing video games. <laughs> so if you like playing video games, that Ace thing is going to, like, get you into dry fire a little bit but you still got to use your real gun yeah. you still got to get and like, the, the, like, to pull that thing the out. conversation that john brought <clears> up where <throat> somebody came up to him and said I, hey i haven't been practicing and i'm like why are you telling me <laughs> no i mean i understand like he's gonna show but me in mean, a couple what, of what, days what, what <laughs> kind of, my <laughs> yeah. question is what kind of conversation do you want to have right now mm-hmm. like why are you are you telling me this so when later are you see me shoot um, you're not as disappointed. You're not. You're not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not as surprised. Like, oh, I, yeah, he clearly hasn't been practicing. <laughs> um, <laughs> or are you looking for me to give you some kind of motivation? Mm-hmm. Um, Which that's an untapped industry, right there. Is, dry is fire. F- no firearms life coach. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. Do it one more time. Yeah. Like I'm gonna sell a book on. Get another rep. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be like you know. It'd be like 60-second abs, but for guns. I don't know. <laughs> how, how to coach the retarded. P90X. How, for, uh, how can <laughs> we monetize this? Actually. Let me think about it. Was it P90X? What was it called? Yeah, P90X. Yeah. Is a, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, what's that yoga one mixed with Pilates? Oh, Taibo? Or play uh, play or yo, or uh, yo play or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, just recently, learned, I <laughs> just recently learned that Pilates was the guy's name. Oh, really? That was it? Steve Pilates. Steve Pilates. That huh? was a real dude. Oh, and man. there's pictures of him from the 60s on the internet where he's doing all the weird stretches and stuff. It's wild. That guy's name. I don't know if his first name actually was What's Steve. What's the one with, like, Billy Blaze? What was that? Ta- uh, that Billy was Ty Bo. Ty Bo, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I love uh, Brian. But now everybody's got Peloton stuff. Yeah. So so Brian Regan, the comedian, uh, I remember he did a... Uh, a skit on on that dude. He's like, "All right, man. So we're gonna jump over the fence. We're gonna jump over the fence. <laughs> we're gonna run from the cops." Is it just me, or does he sound like Jim Gaffigan? <laughs> he does. He does. Am I bit. the only? Because I told yeah, my, I said me and my wife were driving because I got the I got uh, XM in the car, so we listen to comedy. And I, I anytime he comes on for a moment, I think it's Jim Gaffigan. But Jim Gaffigan is very. He has very sloppy words, so he's like, Bleh. and I'm like, okay, so that's not him. So that's the only way I can tell yeah, him apart. Yeah, you gotta wait. And yeah. my wife's like, they don't sound anything alike. And I'm like, well, you know what? Your hearing's probably better than mine, so <laughs> it's it's probably <coughs> close. We'll trust your opinion. Man, we really on off a tangent on that one, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. that's good stuff. Sixty second training. So going training. back to what you said earlier about staccatos and law enforcement, mm-hmm. can you touch on that a little bit? <clears throat> Excuse me. So this may be me being very boring. Because pedantic. No, it's just boring. <laughs> Reliability is boring. It is if boring. something's reliable, it's boring, mm-hmm. right? 
Yeah, there's nothing to talk about. Yeah, there's nothing to talk about. Or you can get into the nuances, or you can start to get into pedantism uh, about triggers and slide releases, and oh, I'm going to do this differently, and I'm going to change the angle on that, and I want a trigger that does. And I, that's that's being pedantic. I don't care what you say, uh, unless it's like just a crap trigger and you got to replace it. Like I get that. But what I'm seeing with the staccatos is is we're dealing with basically a 1911 operating system. Mm -hmm. So we've got a magazine release that's not reversible. We've got an active safety. It's ambi or not, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a single action only trigger. And then we have some particulars with the magazines, how they behave and under certain manipulations and stuff like that. Uh, so all that stuff. So if I take a guy who became a cop and he'd never really messed with guns, so they issued him a Glock 17. And he went to the academy with the Glock 17, and then he started shooting the Glock 17, and then any time his department made him shoot, he was shooting the Glock 17, and then if he ever shot on his own time, which probably didn't, he shot the Glock 17. Now, fast forward five, six, seven years, I now give him a 2011. What's about to happen? Do you think he's going to have some training issues? Oh, yeah. definitely. They're, they're, they can be overcome. If he's the kind of guy who only shoots when you make him, if he's the he's not shooter, going to overcome those issues. Happen, yeah. So what I'm watching happen, and this just isn't those guys, because I'm teaching instructor-level classes, so all my students are instructors, which is a, a scale. It varies. <laughs> like, this may be the best, best shooter this department has. And I'm like, <laughs> but usually <laughs> I see good shooters, but they may not be <clears throat> worldly in the realm of gun operating systems. So I've had officers, I, had a, I taught a class up in Virginia, and one of the departments that was there uh, all the guys had switched to Staccato, and two of the officers in the class had never really shot single action only anything. They came up on striker guns. Yeah. They were, I think they originally were issued M&Ps, and then they went to Glocks. Mm. So he would come out of the holster, and if he remembered to turn the safety off, which again, training issue, if he remembered to immediately clear it, he would take his thumb off and put it underneath. And then, because that's his Glock grip. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he'd pull the trigger, and the slide would cycle, and the gun would recoil, and his thumb would drive up and put safety on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he'd go bang, click, bang, <laughs> and people are like, oh, that's a training issue, training issue, training issue. And you're absolutely right. It is a training issue. Is your department teaching a transition course to go from Glock or whatever to Staccato? No. It's a gun's a gun. Uh, didn't we just talk about how this was a training issue? <laughs> so my question is, I can get th three Glocks for a Staccato? Yeah. Yeah. What is the staccato doing? And don't get me wrong, I love staccatos. What's it doing better? I, that's the part I can't figure out. Why would a department spend three times as much, plus or minus, yeah. for a gun that essentially is supposed to do the same thing that the Glock did, hit the bad guys? It, it, if, the, if the Glock or the M&P or the FN or whatever they had before was... Is this just trying to use the gun to overcome skill issues? Because that's what it feels like to me. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm seeing a training issue. It's obviously correctable, but you have to provide the training. Yeah, yeah. There, you have to actually put in the work to overcome it. Yeah, and agencies don't generally. Because I ask this question, like, hey, how many outside of qualification, how many hours of firearms training, live fire training, are you guys doing a year? And some Pretty departments, zero, I bet. the answer is zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some departments are, we have this, we have 10 hours or we've got, yeah, but yeah. nobody's telling me, oh, we have 40 hours throughout the year. Yeah. Now that department exists. I just don't, I haven't seen them. Probably yeah. very few <clears throat> and far between. I would have There's certain agencies that do. But even then, like 40 hours is nothing, man. It, it really isn't. 40, and, and if you think about, if you take 40 hours and you spread it out over a year, but then you think about, okay, that's like, what, five, eight-hour days. But the eight-hour day is actually a six-hour day. It's less than an hour a week. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. then add in lunch. You know, and add in, breaks. Yeah, and yeah. cops take luxurious breaks. Yeah. Two-hour lunches um, and stuff. So I, I always think, like, if, if the individual citizen is like, hey, I don't want to carry this gun anymore. I'm going to switch to a staccato. I'm actually a little bit less adverse to that because I'm pretty sure they'll probably if they, and if I'm talking to them in a class, it's evident to me that they're willing to put in the time and the to make the transition. Yeah, because mm -hmm. not every cop's a gun guy. Definitely. You know, like, oh God, like, no. Mm -hmm. They're few. Like there's disproportionately smaller. Was it out of every hundred men? Was that was that Her Herodotus or Heraclitus that said that every out of every one hundred men? I'm not sure. Okay, I figured you would know, Ranger. You, know, that you yeah. guys put that on a t-shirt at some point, I'm sure. Some, some people uh, do. So anyway, the whole out of every hundred men thing. It's either Heraclitus or Herodotus. It's one of the two. Somebody with age. Uh, one, of the, one of the older guys said it. Yeah. Uh, so out of every hundred men, curly you know, hair. Uh, <laughs> you're going to end up with, like when I was a training officer for a police department, I had 38 officers. 
that I was responsible for their firearms and all that other stuff. And out of those 38, I had two guys that were tuned in. They shot on their own time. They did competition shooting. They were dealing with that last 10% of perfection that they were going to chase for the rest of their lives. And then I had four people who were, they would do it, but only because you made them. Mm -hmm. They were good shooters, but they didn't care. And then everyone else was a quickly sliding scale of shit. Like, where's the bottom? Where's the bottom? Where's the bottom? Where's the bottom? Uh, because they, were, they weren't gun guys. Mm -hmm. They were just there for the check. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't see any problem with it because they hadn't needed the gun. So like, well, I'm probably not going to need it since I hadn't needed it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, frequency bias or complacency. Oh, I, I just had a great example of that. A uh, <laughs> buddy of mine who's been uh, at a local PD by me, uh, he spent a huge amount of time uh, training but only after his first shooting, mm -hmm. right? He was re reactive to the situation, right? He, he had a bad incident. He got lucky as hell. And then he was like, I need to learn how to do this better. And then no, lo and behold, he has a second shooting years and years later, and it works out very well. And he's like, all right, it validated the fact that I invested in myself and now I'm doing better. Cool. And then no, no BS, like not even a month ago, I think it was a two weeks ago. And he, he retires in December, and uh, he just got into his third shooting, and uh, and you just keep going easier yeah. and easier. Dude, and and uh, watch, watching the body cam that that was on him, uh, his and then uh, the partners near him, when uh, they responded to this dude, and he did a phenomenal job, like beautifully executed, problem solving everything. I did the gun. Gun came towards him. He had he had his maul on on the dude the entire time. Oh, you yeah. see the little green laser laying on him, and the dude shut the door as as he was pointing the gun down on him and he just smokes him through the door and everything D did a phenomenal job and uh he even moved right he he moved and gave him a different angle to deal with too through the door and i was like dude high five All right he did get shot in his his plate carrier he took one which actually the light that was on his plate carrier took one which is oh. a cloud light <laughs> stopped the bullet <laughs> it's sitting in it it's actually cool oh, that's cool get that and thing. then uh and then the next time he got a wing, right? And uh, and he, he had a little scratch on his arm. You know, but phenomenal job that he did. And it's really cool to see. But it's because of his first lucky, lucky ass shooting that he took the time to go ahead and invest himself. And it paid off because he could he could not be retiring in December, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you do see that quite a bit where someone will have a close call. I've seen guys start to take like defensive tactics more seriously. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I got to start taking jujitsu or I got to start doing this, or mm -hmm. I got to lose some weight or I got to, I got to take life more seriously. Cause if, cause complacency is a real thing. Humans like by design, we just get complacent. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, you know, that ties all the way back down to your eye fire. You're like, well, I'll, I'll just do it later. <clears throat> or I did it recently. Uh, I'm good. Um, and we can talk ourselves into all kinds of different mental positions where we uh, we don't have to do something. It's funny. I kind of see it like a like you guys remember that that green tube of goo that was in like the Ninja Turtles movies. Yeah, the yeah. ooze. The ooze. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, remember how like it would empty like when they were inserting it into the machine and all that BS. Well, when I think of training, I actually think of that. That ooze tube, right? <laughs> that is it's super specific. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. bear with me, right? Yeah, okay, 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 okay. So, so when I when I get a good practice session, whether it's dry or live or whatever, right, I imagine that tube filling, right? And I, I reach some kind of pinnacle with that tube. I'm like, I am warmed up, right? Like, come at me, bro, kind of feeling, right? That that kind of like full of practice, right? And like I'm I'm practiced at that point. The second I leave the range or I stop dry firing, I put my stuff down and, and put it away and go eat or something, like, it just starts to drain slowly, but it starts to drain. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it drains fast because they're inexperienced, they have less time, and just they suck at shooting or whatever. But the the further down it gets, in my mind, I st I'm like, oh, my God, I must be half a tube right now. I need to go practice, right? Like, <laughs> like it's, it sounds crazy, but that's my autism, right? Um, <laughs> as we started the conversation with, but, but like, I'm trying to keep that tube man full all the time. So wh whatever I can, like, I'm, I'm literally dressed to go out to the range before you guys stop me to come out here and, and, and do a podcast. And I was like, as it, cause like, I'm feeling my, my tube of ooze. So where are you at right now? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, on caffeine, full, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but on uh, on little little skill stuff, man. I, I I dry fired this morning before I went to the gym, 
and and then uh, and it's like, man, I'm feeling like it's dropping. I want to go shoot, All right? So it's it's like one of those things. Like in my mind, that's how it works because I enjoy this enough. Some people, it may be like they, they need to be motivated to do it, and then some people need a catalyst, right, to force them to do it. Like like either somebody sitting there, like a <laughs> a life coach, a gun life coach, um, or or like you just need you know a bad s- situation to cause you to to like take it more seriously, and like. I don't know about you, but I don't want a bad situation to cause me to take it more yeah. seriously. So it, it's like, it, can it happen? Yeah, man. A, a car accident can too. Luckily, we practice driving every day. Like, like you could do the same thing with shooting. You know, like a, a bad shooting a situation could happen and you could be so unprepared that you kill somebody's little girl. Like, bro, that something that could be worse than death kind of thing. And uh, And you do that like don't let that be your catalyst you know what i mean yeah. uh, be be prepared enough not to make that your catalyst and uh and treat it as such and you would be you probably take it more seriously um so that's that's the way i look at it right like i don't want to mistake and or make a mistake that'll cost me my sanity and my life my future all that jazz i'd rather put in the investment and give myself that time and give myself that confidence that that can only come from getting better at something versus uh versus sucking so bad that you do the wrong thing and it, honestly like it's it's failure that's going to lead you in that direction but if you don't find that failure you're never going to learn anything like you have to you have to get there which is the scariest thing for all of us to reach like think of uh the male like the spe- the male species right? the, the male side of the species all right we we don't want failure we, d- we we hate it right we don't like failing at something we don't like being bad at things but it's okay like Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> like, nobody cares that you suck at shooting right now. There's somebody's going to care when you do the bad thing with the gun, but like when you come to the range and you come to a class or you come go practice or whatever, nobody cares that you suck. You're there to get better. We get it. It's like seeing somebody overweight at the gym. You're like, they're on the treadmill. They're going. Like, high five. Like, I'm that guy that walks around and gives those fat people a high five. <laughs> Like, yeah, I know <laughs> I'm an asshole, but, <laughs> but, but I'm like, I'm, I'm happy they're there because it's such a good thing. It's like, man, you're doing something good for yourself. I'm come back tomorrow or whatever, you know, come back later. Um, but it's like, uh, that's the same thing. Like if somebody sucks at shooting, but they're out there trying to d- get better and they're dry practicing and I get it every once in a while students that sucked and I'm like, dude, you need to you need practice more. And they send me videos, the DM me videos or email me or add them to the Facebook page or. Uh, the, like the alumni page and stuff, and they show like they're, they're they're trying, like good on you, Bubba. Like because you you could suck more, but you practicing is probably going to make you suck less. So do it, right? And uh, and it's kind of cool to see. And I think that's something that we we need to like. I think as as a community of peeps that want to make better human beings, is encourage those kind of things versus like you know, oh man, that instead of digesting somebody's like like the the run they put up on the internet and the like competition run or something or a drill they do instead of like dissecting all the things they did bad right oh you're you're a piece of shit you you put your thumb in the wrong spot or yeah. you, you you didn't even see the target on that first shot or whatever bs that people like put up instead of yeah, doing that it's like encourage yeah. them a little bit you know like like hey let's let's uh let's do betters you know i like to see that you're shooting a good thing that you went to a competition and like rock on i know it sucked and you you were at the bottom of the barrel but you probably learned something from about yourself or about what you could be working on so i take things a little bit different when it comes to that but always trying to fill my ooze man always filling fill my ooze it's weird there's so a short yeah just just yeah, clip just that clip. nothing else no context just yeah no context <laughs> fill my ooze fill your ooze <laughs> i'm gonna have to do some some digging on youtube to find some 19 the, early 90s yeah that's like yeah, late, 80s. Was it late 80s it was late 80s it was before i was born i was watching them bitches. oh great <laughs> yeah never mind I've i love me that. some some ninja turtle movies i'm pretty sure i saw one and two i the think theater. the live action movies were were 90s but the cartoon was yeah. 80s because mm. i can remember i can remember going to see three in the theater <laughs> for sure that's maybe a, two yeah yeah that's cool <laughs> We're, we're I close. watched them I on think VHS. Me and you're close to the same age. Yeah. Yeah. You're forty-two. Yeah, we're the same. Forty-two or forty-three, something like that. Yeah, eighty, <laughs> eighty-one. It's not, dude. Twenty-five yeah. was the last year. Twenty-five, I could rent a car. After that, like, it didn't even matter. Yeah, after that, yeah, yeah it's all. Car you get twenty-five. That, the last perk is car rental, and then you just, <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> it's just downhill after that. <laughs> yeah, it's just downhill after that. Uh, and everybody makes a big deal out of fifty because you're like you're half a century old, but I'm not there yet, so I don't. 
I don't know. Uh, um, somebody will tell you when you get there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my wife has to remind me how old I am because I forget. Cause <laughs> yeah, it doesn't wife, matter anymore. She, she tries to, like, gaslight me. She's like, yeah, you're 34. I'm like, wait a second. No, I'm not. I'm 32. <laughs> she keeps on, like, trying to, like, <laughs> add a year. Yeah, just add a yeah. year here and there. That's good. That's uh, good. Uh, that's hilarious. That is, it's an interesting conversation because, like, no one has really cracked the code on conformity to discipline because you have to have, like, a controlled environment with penalties for failure, a military, mm-hmm. right? A police department, John, John, you said it right, like, nobody cares if you suck, and that's, like, literally the definition of a police administration. Nobody cares that their officers suck mm-hmm. until, until mm-hmm. something happens because if they cared... Because it's the least, it's the least likely piece of equipment a cop's going to use, but it's the one with the highest penalties. It's yeah. literally pass fail. Yeah, it's a risk versus. Because at the very thing. least, missing will cause property damage, which again, not a big deal, but the bullet should have went in bad guy, not into a plate glass window or somebody's car or something like that. Which a whatever. Susie sitting over there. So a lot of departments yeah. they don't care about training until something bad happens, and but then they try to, and they may fix it, and then it may be fixed for a little while, but then you get down to the individual shooter, and not even cops, just people. How do you motivate them? Well, we've tried all these different T-shirts. We've tried these different books. We've tried these different. We've tried guilt shaming people into shooting better with Instagram, like Punisher symbol, like like Punisher symbol this and Sheepdog that. Like as a cop, I was like, what T-shirt are we? Are we? We did okay, Sheepdogs, and then we did we did Spartans for an uncomfortable amount of time. I think a lot of people didn't do a lot of research into that whole whatever. <laughs> uh, free society. And then, like, I think we're on Vikings now, which is really weird. I don't uh, know. Samurai were in there somewhere. But it's like no one has ever cracked the code on what you can say or what quote you can use from Peaky Blinders to get someone to really start taking this stuff seriously. Oi, bloke. So, so on the Internet, <laughs> what you really see is you see people, like, you'll see a conversation about skill specifics, and then some guy will just drop a tombstone quote. I'm like, dude, you are invisible. Why did you skyline yourself? Mm-hmm. Because now I'm looking at you like, I found the idiot. <laughs> um, and he's probably, in his mind, he thinks, like, well, aim small, miss small. And I'm like, do you even understand what that means? Because you're right, but not on purpose. Like, you just stumbled into this. You accidentally ran into the right answer. Um, yeah, he's, he's correct through no fault of his own. Uh, and it's just like the same thing with education. Like, you'll go to classes on adult learning, and they'll, they'll straight up tell you, like, hey, we're still in the dark ages on how to, how to maximize knowledge retention. Mm-hmm. And then we found that lecture is the most, in, is the most inefficient way to, to retain knowledge. And I'm like, aren't you lecturing me right now? Like, what? <laughs> and they're like, well, we don't, we don't know what else to do. We had to give you a lecture to yeah, tell you that yeah. lectures aren't very <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of, it's incumbent, uh, it, it always comes back to, it's incumbent upon you to pay attention and seek clarification, and then, and then, and it's not willpower, it's discipline. You have mm-hmm. to have the discipline to do something. Mm-hmm. And if shooting is only a small facet of your life because you don't carry a gun professionally, you're probably less likely to have the discipline for the grand exercises. But five minutes of dry fire? Come on. Mm-hmm. I've literally wasted five minutes just staring at a wall in the morning, like I've sat on the couch, on waking up longer than five minutes. You know what's that? You sit on the shitter for longer. You than You can five do the dry fire in there. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, two birds, one stone. Dude, and, and that brings it back to like the staccato conversation and and the police officers, and I'm not going to say a certain police department or a certain yeah, retailer yeah, yeah, yeah. or something that did something, but they were trading in. Well, I mean, Safari Land holsters that yeah. were light compatible for Safari Land holsters that were not light compatible. And that was definitely a training issue. Because they were taking their lights from their officers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of problems and, and, and mistakes and negligence, but that's a training issue. Anytime someone shows me an example yes. of like why weapon lights aren't a good idea, it's always a training issue. Yep. And I'll be the first to tell you, the first weapon light I was ever officially issued on a, on a handgun in a police department, they just gave it to us. And they gave us our new holsters. And we we're there at roll call putting everything together. Just and luckily, to I already owned a gun, and I already had some experience with a weapon light. And I just used a little bit of common sense. I hadn't had any real formal training, but I understood that, like, this is for gun stuff. Right? So <laughs> I get my weapon light, and I go 10-8. And everything's good for me. But I wasn't even an instructor at the department yet. I was still still pretty new. And then, like, probably three or four days later, I'm coming out of roll call, and there was this officer, Johnson. Johnson spent 20-something years at Oakland PD. He was a fantastic cop, highly decorated, but then, like, his divorce just killed his retirement, so he ended up going back to work. Mm. So he worked for our agency, and he just let himself go. The man just didn't care anymore. 
Just getting that paycheck. Yeah, and he and now keep in mind he came up in mid '80s and retired in the '90s, so weapon lights were foreign to him. <clears throat> so they give him this weapon light and provide him with no training. Meanwhile, I'm the young guy, recently out of the military, or more recently than him. Uh, so I understand the premise, and I come out of roll call in the morning, and the sun is still coming up, but it's still dark because our roll, we went on the road. Uh, we went 10 eight at six thirty. Roll call was at six, six thirty on the road for shift change, and I see him with his gun out. And he's moving around his vehicle. And I'm like, I guess I should probably take my gun out, too, because yeah. something's going on. Yeah, we got the, And we he's, got he's peeking, and I'm like, is he looking for someone crouching behind the vehicle? Like, I'm like, oh, today's the day. Yeah, yeah. Let's the do this. Lot, burn it down. <laughs> so I, I kind of, like, start moving tactically or whatever you want to call it. I'm like, Johnson, what do you got? And he's like, I dropped my damn pin. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, where's your handheld? You still have a handheld flashlight? He's like, and he looked at me like I was stupid. Yeah. He's like. Well, they gave it, and he, they gave us this, and I'm like, my brother in Christ, you have 52 <laughs> inches of duty belt. You have room for a handheld flashlight on your kit. Like he just took it off. Like yeah. just he's well, like, I don't need this anymore. I got one fly. I don't need. And you know, the they, you, there, there was a video that floated around on on Live Leak, and you'd see it on YouTube too. There was a video where a cop was directing traffic with his weapon. Like that's completely training related. Mm -hmm. You know, built recently there was that controversy. Like Wilson Combat put up that video. <laughs> or they had guys talking about weapon light stuff. And the examples they gave me, or they gave the audience, were both training related. So I'm like, give me an example that's that is a, a, a direct fault of the technology. And the most common example people come up with is like, well, the bad guys shoot at the light. I'm like, yeah, but during the day, they just shoot at you. Yeah. So it's not really the disadvantage you think it is. So I think sometimes just a lack of critical thinking, not only in the technology getting involved in the situation, but how you're looking to overcome it. Because... Guys, we need lights. Like, you can't go out at night and out of sheer stubbornness see better. You can't just be like, <laughs> I'm eating carrots. And then so you pop a vessel carrots. and you're like, I see colors. <laughs> <laughs> so we drive cars, we use radios, we use cell phones. Um, for self-defense, we have flashlights. We have, go like, literally guns exist because it makes more sense. It's a technological solution to a human shortcoming. Mm -hmm. And lights are the same way. I don't care about the handheld versus the weapon mounted or whatever, but, like, if you're going to, you got to be proficient with whatever your technology is. And sometimes we use technology to overcome a human deficiency, mm -hmm. light. Sometimes we change guns to overcome a failure to train. You can hide some bad behaviors on a single action trigger that you can't hide on a striker fire yep. gun. And I think that might be some reason why people are like, oh, the gun just shoots better. I'm like, no, it's just you have less time to screw it up. Yeah, there's yeah. less time for you to move it before. Yeah. It's yeah. And time. it's a heavier gun, so it's going to handle recoil energy yeah. better. So on and so forth. So I understand it, but I don't. But you still suck. Yeah. <laughs> it, it'll be interesting whenever somebody with a red dot sight can actually pass the federal air marshal. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's that'll be, be, you mean that'll besides be, the air marshals that already did? Be, be, right. Besides everybody in the world that <laughs> uses red dots, probably. Yeah. 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 Anyway. That's well, and that's, that's not even the – well, uh, I'm not getting into that. That's not even the right fam call, but whatever. Because <laughs> uh, the fam call that everybody knows about, the one that's on the internet, that's the, not – The current one. No. Because I think what happened is an air marshal came to the office one day, and he's like, did you guys know that there are planes longer than seven yards? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's not official yet, but for the past couple of years, they have been uh, playing with a replacement. Um, so we'll see. They just shoot at the door, and the door falls off. No, it's a much harder course of fire. I've shot it, uh, and I shot it with a red dot. So yeah, I've shot the seven yard one, and I've shot the one that's that's going to become the may become the official replacement because I had a, a fam send me like, hey, here it is, and he just texted it to me. Uh, but I'm not going to out him for obvious reasons. Um, but that's like a complete tangent anyway. But it's just interesting to see like, okay, guys, hold on. Um, <clears throat> why are we using a qual to measure skill? Yeah, performance. Because a qual is just for court defensibility. That's like saying, hey, I passed the FBI qual, and I'm like, were you awake? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm like. That's the bare minimum. Good That's job. all you need. <laughs> the FBI, the new FBI call is not even a sobriety test. I'm convinced that you could just go out there just completely fucking zooted and pass that shit uh, with your support hand only because it's not a difficult call. No calls are fucking difficult. Yeah. And if they are difficult, ding, 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 your skill sucks and you need to work on it. Calls are literally compromises between a measure of p potential technique that could be used and court defensibility. And usually in court systems, they ask, is the officer qualified? Yes, okay. And then the endeavor comes up. I can't believe some of these quals don't get drug in a court. Because a lot of these quals that you see are laughable. 
Yeah. Well, yeah all, all they're wanting is that box checked. Like, yeah. is it, a, is it mm -hmm. called? Yeah. Well, and the okay, courts well, and everybody just kind that. of agrees. Like, the defense attorneys agree and the prosecutors agree. Like, oh, yeah, the, the box is checked. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, unless the officer did something weird. But even which, then, like, like if if it was like a in-service training record that showed longevity of shooting and performance over time or whatever, like even something like that wouldn't ever get brought up because it's not the same situation they were actually in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're on a range. It's a controlled environment. Like you got to think like a qual is you're doing it in the safest possible space. You can actually shoot. Right. Which is on the range. It's you're, literally the only time where, you know, all three metrics ahead of time. Yeah. Exactly. And like, you're not going to, you're not going to get the same, situation metrics level of enthusiasm all the other thingies that are happening when some dude is stabbing some lady and now you have to apply your qual skills you know what i mean like uh, that's that's why it's it's it it's retarded right and then uh, they're not designed to be failed no. i don't think a lot of people realize that quals are literally designed to be passed yeah so they, they could literally check those boxes so even right? a qual like the air marshal it is technically harder but it's not hard shooting for people who practice. Who people who practice, yeah. Which, oh, which could be you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but you're not supposed to talk like that, right? No, you're not right? supposed to. You're not you supposed to be feelings. confident in your skill set, because then people just think, oh, he's being arrogant, or he gets to shoot all the time, or people make up excuses. I'm like, yeah, I shoot all the time because I do it for a living. I, but I, I shot all the time when I didn't do it for a living. Yeah. Because it was something that I was interested in, something that I was passionate about, something that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I still find shooting very therapeutic. Uh, generally these days, if I wanted to shoot just for funsies, I just shoot intermediate cartridge long range. I'll take a, you know, my, I got an FN DMR3 and I'll just lay out with some good 77 grain or some shitty 77 grain and I'll just make things go dang for about an hour and try loophole shooting, awkward position shooting, but mostly I'm just doing it because it just, it's, it's consistently repeatable and it's relaxing. If I want to make myself feel bad, I just shoot one-handed from 25 with a handgun. Because no matter how good I get at that, I still feel bad about how well I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and some people they go to the range and they and I think this is where you see this the, you see this in classes a lot. Guys get down on themselves about how well they perform in a class. Mm -hmm. And my question always is to them, "What's your baseline?" And they're like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "When you go to the range, what are you working on?" And they're like, "Well, you know," I was like, "Be honest. Where do you where do you start?" And they're like, well, you know, closer distances, three yards, five yards. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to be confident in your skill set. Do you feel like you're good at those distances? And, and sometimes they'll say no, but usually they'll be like, yeah, I feel, I feel pretty good. I'm like, then why are you shooting from no, them? Stop staying there. Move back there. to seven. Move back to ten. Your baseline should be where your skill, the, the first distance of where your skill starts to become questionable. Mm -hmm. So when I go to the range to do my personal practice, I'm starting at seven yards because under certain conditions, seven yards, my skill can – be a little bit less than what I want. So I go to the range. I don't need to shoot at three. I'm good there. I, every now and then, I'll go up there and do some maintenance. But it's going to be one one mag, maybe one string. Mm -hmm. And then I'm moving back to seven, and then I'm going back from there. And often, these days I go to the range, I start at 10 or 15 and work back from there. And it's like the further back I go, the least likely I am to shoot someone from that distance, but the more critical the skill set is. And one thing that's always bugged me is people don't think about – what it means to engage from these distances like you'll see guys at 25 and you're like all right 25 yards give me give me whatever the round count is and they'll be like <sighs> and i'm like what are you doing they're like well we have more time from 25 and i'm like who told you that i was like okay so let's think about this let's if i'm about down. to legally shoot someone from 25 yards everybody mm -hmm. how am i justifying that what's happening that gives me the ability to shoot someone from 25 yards. What are they probably doing? Killing they're probably people. shooting at me. Or somebody else. Or they're stabbing or shooting at someone else. So that whole time that you feel like you have, that just shit just went right out the window. You ain't got it. Um, I like to run a two-second baseline. Yeah. Like your first round needs to be cooking mm -hmm. down range in two seconds, and it's completely achievable. And that's slow. Yeah. It is slow, mm -hmm. but it's intimidating for people who have never had to do it before. Mm -hmm. So sometimes guys have to come to a class to realize that they're not as good as they thought they were because they were only working on what they were already good at. Well, like out here, um, we've got the, the one of the drills that they're doing is the, the B8s at 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and B8s it's, are intimidating, too, it's yeah. Ten seconds, uh, ten rounds in ten seconds. and Is that from the holster? Yeah, from that's the holster. That's smoking fast. Yeah. 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 
I'm just throwing a lot of people off because they're like, oh, oh, sweet, ten minutes for for the for the ten rounds. You know, they're thinking like the regular yeah. be it. No, 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 dog. Because it's, it's usually seconds. twenty seconds. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We we did that one time at uh, we were, we were hosting a, a shoot off or a shooting competition. It was a big event, and they ended up having like three people tied. And they're like, hey, Chris, come up with something really quick that we can do to get these guys off the range. I'm like, all right, sure. Twenty five yards, headshots, two seconds. And they're like, what? I was like. Whoever gets it's going to win. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, two seconds is too long. I was like, ah, that's before you try it. Yeah. Let's go. Two seconds for a headshot. That's 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 steep. smoking. Yeah. That's steep. And they had one guy. I was like, you get one shot. Went, one guy did it. That's Three how I way do my tie, tie went away. in class. If I have two students tie for, for top shooter, I'll like, all right, tightest group wins. And every now and then I'm like, these groups are the exact same <laughs> size. So, and I've had a three-way tie before. So I'll take them oh, back damn. to 25. And I'm like, all right, guys, on the tone, give me one round headshot. Closest to center cranial vault wins. Because um, they're all going to make time. Shooters at that level, they're all going to make time. So beep. And then we go down range, and the bullet's the closest to the center. That guy won. That's a good tiebreaker. Yeah, that is. It's easy. And yeah. I think a lot of people feel like distance and speed is mutually exclusive, and that's why I hate the word fast. Mm-hmm. I like to, I, I, I'm trying to remove fast from my vocabulary as a teacher. I hate saying it. Sometimes it fits. But I like just saying you need to be efficient. You need to be efficient at all distances. And guys are like, well, what does that mean? I was like, if you have a one-second exposure on your threat before he moves, goes to mm-hmm. color, or fucking turns to vapor, how many rounds do you want to fire? The answer should be as many as I can knowledgeably shoot because mm-hmm. I don't know how many rounds it's going to take to stop him. So you get guys back to 15 and they want to, they'll come out of the holster, pop, pop. So we just had about a second go by between those two shots. What were they doing in that second? If they needed to re-aim the gun, then they were working. Mm-hmm. But if they were just waiting for a better sight pitcher but not doing anything to create it, mm-hmm. then they're wasting time. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what do y'all got coming up this year, new offerings? Or do you have any new offerings? Uh, uh, it's pretty much the same same offerings, but I've tweaked the uh, – I always tweak classes. Yeah. Like uh, the class that you guys have been to, like it's no longer the same. It's constantly, constantly evolving. Um, I got away from the whole like write your curriculum out and make it like really pretty and easy to read and stuff. And um, – and like, and then go by my schedule, what I want to do. I got away from that. I want to say a few years ago. And now I, I kind of live curriculum as a living document Mm -hmm. and it branches. Right. So like, like, man, I've got a lot of like, like I got some guys that need more work. Some guys that need to be pushed more. I need some guys that like, they're kind of in the middle. Right. Well, the curriculum works for all three sets of people because they get to push themselves at different rates for the same exercise at most. So it, it offers a different a different look at it versus the other way where it was like, hey, this is the standard I want you to meet right now and do it kind of thing. Uh, so the my curriculum at least it's uh it's constantly evolving, constantly changing and, and like what I found is uh it works for a, a wider variety of people now versus what it used to work for. So where, uh, where I used to get like, ah, man, the, the intermediate to, to more skillful level guy can come to class and get a lot out of class, but the newer dude's going to struggle a lot. Instead of it, now all of them can get a lot out of class and go home with the, hopefully the ability to like diagnose their stuff so they can get better at understanding what they're doing wrong, know how to fix those things, and then also like how to practice because I think that's one of the things I, I was doing it last year a lot where I told people, hey, you need to dry practice more. You kind of suck at this. You need to practice more, whatever it is. And then at the end of class, one of the feedback things was, uh, you know, you talked about it a lot, but you never showed us how. And I was like, you kind of, you're right, dude. Like you're right. So I was like, whoever wants to stay another hour, let's talk about how to practice. And so now I've, I've included that into class and teach people how to dry practice properly and also practice. Like, so when they realize, ah, oh, man, I suck at doing this one thing or this specific skill. Now I can isolate that skill in my own practice because now I know how after this class. So it makes it a lot easier for dudes to, to take away those kind of things versus uh, before. I know back when I was a brand new student at this kind of thing, I had no idea how to dry practice. And I learned as I went. 
And, uh, and I realized that based off of just sucking at certain things, I just work on those specific things and then got better. And then, um, and I just created my own way of dry practicing. Well, there's, there are right and wrong ways to do it. So it's kind of cool to add that into classes. At least that's what I've seen and it'll get a lot of good feedback from that. So little things like that have tweaked in classes. So that's, that's what I would call not new offerings, but adjusted classes that have changed and evolved. So it's cool. That's a, it, an interesting point that, like, I, nobody ever taught me how to dry fire. Mm-hmm. Like, we would do it, like, sometimes we'd have, like, a, a point of, a point of uh, instruction where we had to dry fire, mm-hmm. but no one was ever teaching me, like, hey, this is something you should do when you're at home. I didn't even, you know, get into handguns. Like, the military, you did, like, the, the dime drill and stuff like that, yeah. and that's dry fire. Yes, but no. But it's bullshit. It, it is. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting. We were talking last night about selection, how the military mm-hmm. doesn't teach you, how the Army doesn't teach you how to swim. Mm-hmm. They expect you to know how. Yeah. At certain levels, you're like, yeah, you need to be able to swim. Uh, are you going to do a, where's, when's the class? When do oh, we try? No class. You got to know how to do it <laughs> right now or you got to leave. And I'm like, what the, what, like that doesn't make, like this is, a, this mm-hmm. is an essential function of the job, but you won't show me how to do it your yeah. way. Like then like everything else in the army is like, there's a block of instruction on how to clean a toilet. I'm sure there's an FM somewhere, <laughs> mm-hmm. but swimming, oh, you got to come with that, bro. Yeah. So like for me, I, I, I like staying inside my fog lanes, man. Like there's things that I know how to teach that I don't teach. Like, I'm a certified three different certifications on precision rifle. I don't teach precision rifle because it doesn't, it, I'm not passionate about it because I spent some time as a police sniper and I can hated it. And I'm like, this is so boring. It's so hot. Can I open the no? If I do, he'll know I'm here. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, and that's a complete facetious exaggeration, but it's pretty much the truth. Like, I just didn't and didn't enjoy it. So with me, I'm teaching obviously what's in demand, right? So for me, for the past almost 10 years now, red dot instructor, low light instructor. And low light instructor is actually seeing a, it, it's, it's a resurgence now. I'm teaching it way more often than I used nice. to before. And then a branch of that is defensive red dot handgun and low light handgun. And I, and I have low light employment, which is kind of like two, it's like three different techniques in the same class. And I'm, I'm, I am playing with the idea of breaking that down because I this recently the last class I taught at, at BTO was just low light handgun. And I think a lot of guys walked away from that with a sobering experience of what it's like to have to start a fight with a handheld light. Like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is how it's how it might start anyway, even if you do have a weapon light. But I'm I'm the same way as John, like I'm constantly adjusting my curriculum and, and, and like the greatest advice I ever had, and it goes back to something we said earlier, like you're never going to be everyone's most effective instructor. You're just not. You can't take a class and 100% get everybody. But that shouldn't stop you from trying. So I'm constantly trying to make adjustments to my curriculum to sometimes based on feedback and sometimes just based on new information or, or a new way to do something or I learned a better way to approach something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to update my curriculum to be as effective as possible. And I keep it as modular as I can, but... You know, you've got bases at the instructor level. You've got these bases that need to be covered because I'm like, this is what you should be teaching your people. If you have more time, great, but this is the bare minimum, and this is what we're going to cover uh, at the instructor level. Low light, same thing, because a lot of people are very deficient in their low light techniques, and I, I can tell by the way that they talk about it. And I'm not saying like I'm I'm the guru on the hill about low light techniques, but it only takes some common sense to figure out how to not to blind yourself with a flashlight in your own house. And if you have, if you're talking to me as if you're saying that you haven't figured that out, then I know that you're here and I'm up here. And that's not, that's not arrogance. That's just fact. Those are ooze levels. Those are ooze levels. They are (laughs) ooze levels. So if someone hasn't even applied critical thinking to a task, then I already know, well, I've, I've already beat you just by the fact that I considered what you're saying. And I said to myself, well, I put that mirror up on that wall, so I'm not going to blind myself on it because I know it's there. I know where it is, yeah. I put it there. Also, my walls are white. Why, what, am I, what are you doing? Um, it's or, just or technique. Just, just, don't, just don't do that. Just, I mean, you just don't, don't do that. It's pretty simple. Uh, but that person hasn't taken formal instruction, so they don't know. And they haven't thought about it, so they don't know. So I'm trying to find ways outside of, like, the instructor-level classes to – encourage people to take a little bit more critical approach to some of the things that they're doing and also get a lot of reps and be held accountable for what they're doing because usually when you take some of these technique based classes like low light accuracy is like third on priority like you got safety concepts principles accuracy and i'm like "Mm, we need to 
we need to fix that. Um, so no new classes in the works. I'm not really designing anything right now. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with low light, teaching red dot, instructor level or not. Uh, handgun stuff, obviously rifle. I still enjoy teaching rifle, but there's not a high demand for it right now. Like, mm -hmm. I don't see nearly as much demand as I used to for defensive rifle. I think a lot of people are, they're, they're more and more and more people are, are trying to up their handgun game, and I, I appreciate that. So, like, I would like to be teaching more active shooter response classes, but the ATF has ruined that for us by making it a, impossible for us to get ammunition. So, that's what I got going on. Sweet. So where can people find out more information about you? I'm on Instagram, Sage Dynamics. Uh, I have a Patreon, Sage Dynamics. I do I do informational videos there. I do reviews there. I also have a YouTube channel, which I'll put like mm, a video a month. Uh, but all my content, I'm doing at least two videos a week on Patreon. Oh wow! So more content, sometimes three. And there's there's three different levels. Really, there's only two. Uh, if you're if you're a learning level supporter, you also get like actual instructional. Uh, practice supplements. I don't believe that you can actually receive instruction from a video. So I don't like to say instructional videos, but they're learning videos. You can learn some stuff. You can pick up some stuff. And it's a much quieter environment. Yeah, you don't yeah. get all the... Oh, the, no oh trolls. God. And I'm like, hey, if you want to pay me to troll me, I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> the riffraff. Yeah. If Dude, the riffraff is... wants to pay to come in, I'm, I'm cool good with that. It, you know? but, but it's just... A, the Patreon has been a great move because it's a smaller community, obviously, than YouTube. But YouTube, anybody can drive by and be like, asshole. Like, that, that's, <laughs> like who are you? Like, um, on Patreon, like you gotta, you got to have the key. To come in and start running your mouth, and I'm cool with that, but I don't really get any of that, I think. And I'm not interested, like, building in a cult, you know, because sometimes somebody will pop on, they'll be a supporter for a month, and then they disappear. And I'm cool with that, too. Uh, but, you know, if people want to see video content, you know, I, I figure I did YouTube free for almost nine years. Yeah. And that was a video a week for nine years. I spent a, a lot, lot of money. Of mm -hmm. And I, I think people realize, like, I never made any money off of YouTube. And there's this weird thing in this gun community where the second a guy has to pay for a video, he puts away the American flag and pulls out the, the communist flag. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. what do you mean, our videos? <laughs> like, we're supposed to get this for free. You're supposed to just provide this service. <laughs> I don't know how much this costs. Uh, but there's a lot that goes into it, as you guys know. There's a lot that just goes into production, mm -hmm. right? So you think about your time, your equipment. But on gun stuff, you're thinking about your ammunition, yep. uh, wear and tear, optics. If I'm doing a review, i got to buy the thing to review. Even if I get it for free, I still have to feed it ammunition. Yeah. Uh, so it gets, it gets, and I, and you can write some of that off, but it gets to it's a where I'm like, I'm still working for free. And if you guys want better content, then you can support me. And if you don't want to support me, you don't have to. It's not a big deal. But yeah. everybody wants to, not everybody, some people want to run their mouths about it. So, you know, it, it's been good though. Um, and then there's, um, I'm on Twitter, X, at Sage Dynamics. That's another place you can find me. That's where I give my, my hot takes. <laughs> Uh, and and one-liners and my yeah. one-liners. I got a lot of one-liners on there, but, but you know, mostly it's um, Patreon, Instagram. In, any new books in the works? Yeah, yeah. I'm always writing, man. I'm writing right now. Uh, Rush the whole rushing winter series. I thought I still have two more books in that series, and I'm done with it. It was always planned to be nine books, but I got sidetracked by sci-fi, so I started writing Carson Winter or Car sorry Carson Gray, and um, I've been. So, like, I've got so many ideas in my head there that I haven't gone back and finished the rushing books. Because I was dropping a rushing book every January, February, and I didn't release one this year. Because I'm 20 chapters into it, but then I got, oh, squirrel. And mm -hmm. I, wrote a, I wrote two and a half books. <laughs> that That's a big fucking squirrel. So I've got, I've got the next, <laughs> uh, part, the next Carson Gray book for June is done. I'm in editing right now. And then I've already started on the, the one after that. That's fantastic, so. I'll get back to rushing winter eventually. I know some people are waiting on it. I'm, I'm trying to have it done this year. So we'll see. What about yeah. you, Duffy? Uh, so I'm on all the same stuff that, that Aaron's on, just under Kinetic Consulting. And then uh, my website's probably the best way to go because you can go in oh, there. Shit, and, I got one of those too. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you can kind of like – it's like a hub for all of it. Um, I also have like a blog on my hub, on my on my hub on my on my website that will also like leads to informational and educational stuff. So, like, every podcast that I do goes on there. It goes on the newsletter and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I would, I would encourage people to go to kinetic-consulting.net, and that's where you can kind of link to everything. But I started using a Patreon also. Um, I think it's it's well worth it in the grand scheme of things versus 
uh, giving it to YouTube kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, and kind of getting nothing for it. Or more signal, less noise too. Yeah. Yeah. Better community. Yeah. It, it, it's honestly, it's a it's a great way of like, because now I can communicate with people easier, mm-hmm. and I, I don't have to sift through the riffraff. And uh, and because you get them, and and uh, the videos are still going up on YouTube every once in a while, but mostly it goes on Patreon, and I need to catch back up with it because I've been moving, and uh, kind of stopped doing it for the couple months that I was in the process of packing and unpacking and stuff. So it's going to kick back up again, but that's pretty much where I am. Uh, but constantly traveling, constantly doing the things. You've got some products too. Yes. So on my website, I still have uh, all my my products when it comes to. The dump pouches, the the nerd for uh, retaining your night vision, um, the med pouch that came out last year. So that's been all really good. Um, discontinued the Lola, right? Because uh, Theorem came out with their version of it, which was cool. Uh, but yeah, I I've got a couple other things in the in the works that I'm kind of playing around with. I need to find uh, somebody that wants to or can make um, more rubberized style products. So I'm looking for somebody to do that kind of thing. Hey, uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I need to find a good rubbery thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got it's an hard. idea that I really want to do, but uh, I just need something in that, that kind of rubberized material. So we'll see. So, uh, but yeah, I've got a few different ideas for different thingamabobs that I want to do that aren't super niche because uh, the, the mall mate was really niche and uh, that, that those things don't sell very well. Yeah, not, yeah. not something that specific it's yeah, uh your target market is people who bought malls yeah yeah it's, it's really small of a sub- subset yeah. of yeah. a very yeah. very small <laughs> the, the multiple <laughs> inceptions of subsets yeah there's dozens of people yeah <laughs> rifle mall want this <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> um but yeah so i am trying to use or trying to go for things that i want like all my products are things that i want but things that i want that aren't so niche uh so we'll see We'll see. It should be kind of cool. I have a couple prototypes I'm messing with right now. Oh, nice. And uh, we'll play around with them. But I'm still working with a lot of different companies, prototyping different things. Um, as usual, like, uh, always trying to, like, fix, adjust, or, like, give them a better way of doing something based off of, like, use from an actual user versus just an engineer that's just, like, this is in the lab perfect. And uh, and you don't get that. That was a good radio voice. It, was it? Nice. Uh, so... <laughs> Scoop them, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So so it should be awesome. And um, uh, Skookum means brave. There you uh, go. But yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it comes out. I'm pretty stoked about it, though. It's it's always cool things, and I like selling thingies that I wanted because other people may want them too. Mm-hmm. Like the dump pouch was one of the biggest ones. I used to cut those things up and glue them and sew them myself out of somebody else's. 18 different dump pouches and it's a cool dump pouch hey, it works out really good so i, I dig it if if we sold night vision mm-hmm. we would definitely have nerds to go with them I, that's y- a there's a there's a lot of up. lot of companies that use the nerd as a an addition to the oh, night yeah. vision uh so when you buy night vision from certain companies they buy them from me uh to just add in yeah. because they're they're not that's expensive cool. compared yeah. to night vision and it's a, it's a really, you a yeah, lot yeah, of money. yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like the amount of night vision I've dropped alone. You know? like, uh, I still have a PBS 14 with a cracked lens because of it. So, <laughs> uh, but it still works. So it's cool. But yeah, little things like that. Still going along with more stuff. So cool. Cool. Well, dudes, once again, thank you for your time today. Uh, are you, are you jumping in one of their classes this weekend? I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't. Figured out my picked. schedule. Have, yeah, I haven't picked, picked yet. I'm waiting to see who's low. I will uh, bless three people with he, my presence. <laughs> he, he, wa- he wants to pretty much come to our class tomorrow night and and uh, and shoot one handed a lot. Um. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, we appreciate your time, and we appreciate your time. If you've stuck around this long and listened to us talk, thank you very much. If you've got questions, please drop them in the comments. Uh, they won't respond because they're only on Patreon. But we will probably not respond either. Hey, on my Patreon, if you shoot well enough, you can get a gun. If, oh, if, oh if you if you yeah, I do a monthly challenge, see. so you can literally, if you if I do a drill every month, and if you're best on the drill, you get something. And this year, I'm doing 12 months of my favorite guns. Oh, oh wow, hell yeah! So uh, I'm already giving away some cool shit. Well, not no, they earned it. Wow, uh, giving yeah. away some earned shit. That's <laughs> that's probably a pretty <laughs> stiff competition on that channel. Uh, there's there's like three people to keep winning. 
<laughs> you got to rewrite your rules. At least rules you only have so you three FFLs. You got to send it to. They me. they have a safe that's like just John's all my cow and guns. John was on there. He would just. He wouldn't want everything, yeah, but the I'm, month I did a shotgun drill. I'm not allowed. Not allowed. <laughs> He's banned from several competitions. <laughs> yeah. Because he keeps winning. Well, well, I got uh, James Barron. James yeah, Barron. Yeah. J- James J- Barron, whenever he wants to win, he'll yeah. pop in it. He's, he's a good well. shooter, man. Yeah, he's awesome. got to make sure the prize is worth it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you heard Shockey at the safety brief. He's like, I had to make Duffy a freaking instructor. Yeah, because he kept winning yeah. year after year after year. Yeah, and they don't even do the prize table the same way as they did, where it was like, you won seven prizes. Pick what you want. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> got me like, I don't know, like 10 grand the first year or something. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why you they don't let him play. You grabbed all the good stuff, and you're like, wait a second. <laughs> any longer. Anyway, thanks for listening. <laughs> Appreciate it. 